Okay, welcome to Grok Learning. Um, I'm going to just go through the course that we're doing here at Helena College. We're going to be doing the Wisetech Global Big Day in Code Launch, and it's an introduction to Python. Um, I'll give you a couple of pro tips as we keep going, um, and I'm going to just talk through some of the stuff. Um, really easy to learn your way around. There's instructions here if you ever get stuck, um, and click on it, it takes you through a nice little tutorial. Um, this is the information that you need to learn or read through. So reading is very important, pro tip number one. The second one is where we're up to, and we can use the arrows to move backwards and forwards between slides. So if you forget something, I did a couple of slides ago, you can um, click back to find out what you actually did. This is our progress bar um, or jump bar. The circles represent learning note slides. The green ones represent problem slides. And this is where we do all our problem slide information. And then we run, um, have a look at our submission, says yay, all tests pass, and then we mark it. Um, we can go back, see results, all that sort of stuff. So save your work, very important, and let's grok on. So I'm going to um, have a look at the first one, Hello World. So traditionally, first program that um, we do is Hello World. Now, pro tip number two, I think I'm up to number two, is if you're watching this on YouTube, watch it at 1.5 speed. So you can slow it down, or you can go back and watch and listen to stuff that you miss out on. So in Grok Learning, everything in this slide can, that is in gray here can be run. So I run the code and I switch back. So if I make a mistake, I can always switch back. So I run the code, see what happens. Hello world. So wow, that's the first program that most people ever write. So you can change this. Hello there. How, how are you today? Cool. So we're going to run that and guess what? Hello there. How are you today? Or I could be a lot more formal. How do you do? And run that. Run the code, sometimes a little bit slow. Um, how do you do? So yay. So we've done our first little bit of code there. We're gonna, it's gonna ask us to do that in a second. So when you're coding, you're talking about syntax and grammar. It's the rules of the programming language. And when we are programming on Grok Learning, we've got purple and green. There are other colors, but purple tells us that it's a function. It's inbuilt code in the language that does something. Green tells us it is a string, and strings are enclosed by single or double quotes. And functions need open and close brackets generally. So we're going to learn all about those um, later on. So make sure you pay attention to those. Um, the hints there, they're fairly important. So run the code, print hello world. Okay, so the next one that we're going to look at is what happens when something goes wrong? It's like, I'll run this program. What? Something's gone wrong? Oh no, I can't code. I'm just, oh, it's just too hard. Like, What's wrong with that? I can't see anything wrong with that. But when you're programming, Python's really good because it actually gives you this error message. It tells you, and it's red, meaning something's wrong. It even highlights it in red there. It's telling you, it's going, tells you something wrong in right high there. Name error. Name right is not defined. I can go, oh, what does that mean? Well, it tells me that it doesn't understand what right is. And I go, oh, duh, because it's actually print. And then I can fix it up. So we learned about a syntax error. Syntax is just the rules of the language. It's um, the grammar that you can use. So print is correct grammar. It's like, yeah, as I say here, I can has I can has cheeseburger is we kind of understand what it means, but it's not correct grammar. So it would fail you in English. Okay, so help I have a syntax error. So let's have a look at this again. Let's run it. Okay, so another common one is EOL, end of line. So what tells you there? So if I read through this. We forgot to end the string. It's come up, it's gone, there's a string, and it's gone, it thinks this last bracket is part of the string, and it's expecting us to close it. So we close it in there, and then we will run it. Okay, so and here's another example, and it's going to say, missing parenthesis. What? What's a parenthesis? It's a bracket. So I can just put the brackets in, and I can jump to there and put them in, and I can run that, and it's all good with the world. Okay, so. Write a program that prints a message, hello world. So we've done that before, so cool. I've done that, so hello world. Just make sure, I'm gonna save it. Now, when you're doing this, very important, capital H, comma, capital W, exclamation mark. Computers are stupid. If it says print, hello world, that's what it expects. So I'm gonna run this, and it says hello world, and I'm gonna go to mark, submit. And it's gonna say, um, it's identical to my previous one, So and it was okay, so I'm awesome, yay. So we're going to keep going with this. We're going to go string of characters. So I'm actually going to delete that so you guys can't cheat along on this one. But a string, so the green stuff here, um, contains any letters, digits, punctuation, space, special characters, all that sort of stuff. Um, they are called, that's a character, and the that is a string of characters. So what if the character you want is in a single quote? You can actually put double quotes, single quotes, and vice versa. So let's run that quote code, and let's run that code just to show you. So um, I can actually put double quotes in by going single quote, double quote, 
double quote, double quote. So that's going to change it to double quotes around there. Um, oh, and I need to go double quotes. Um, it does get confusing. Like if I do that, that's going to say error because it's going, that's the end of the string. And then there's a, what? it's just like not going to know. It says end of line while scanning a string literal. So it's open a quote, full stop, and then another quote. So you always have to have um, double quote. Yeah, have to have new quote, new, like matching matching quote marks. So strings are in between quote marks and can contain most characters. Um, okay, so we can use a statement. A statement is the smallest standalone part of the program. It's a line of code. Um, this is a statement. And Python runs, well, most programming languages um, run sequentially unless you tell them otherwise. So that there will, let's have a look. Happy birthday to you. Yep. Nice, I'm not going to see that because that would be punishment for you. So we're going to continue on. Storing things in variables. Okay, so now we're starting to get to the part of programming that is more useful. So a variable is just something where you want to store some data that you're going to use later on. Um, and we're going to see lots of examples of variables, like the, one of the fundamental um, building blocks of programming. So here we've got a variable, and it has a name, and the name is line. And we're using the equal sign, which means we're going to assign this string into line. So line is now has the value that she's a jolly good fellow. So every time the computer sees line, from now on it's going to use that. So print line, print line, print line, and so so all of us is going to go, okay, that's pretty cool. So we've done that and we can change that string however much we want. So next thing along is we're going to join strings and variables together. So let's concatenate or add strings. So for example, Harry Potter, we can write that, run it, and it's going to go Harry, oh, that's not what I expected. So there's a couple of ways we can put a space in there. We can use plus, and then we can use a space character, plus Potter. Or we can, here's an example, we could have, I'll just show you this one, put a space there. And that will do exactly the same thing. So just an example, I could put a space there. Generally, you would um, not put the space into the string like that. Generally, you would not have a space, and you would actually go plus, plus, and then I can go mobile. Because if you put a space in there, which one did I put it in? I don't know, and it gets a bit confusing. So um, generally, um, if it's just a string, you put the space there. If it's a variable, don't put a space with it. So that's a pro tip. Okay, so good evening. We're going to a, a rock concert, and um, the band leader is going, good evening, London, or Toronto. So we're going to write a program. Um, we need to store the city name in a variable called city, and we need to update the program so it works for the next city, Toronto. So city equals, where are we going? Um, Toronto, oh, it's a string, Toronto. And you go print, good evening, comma, evening. and then close my quotes. I'm using double quotes. So let's just have it from other programming language, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm going to go city, and then I'm going to close that. And is that going to work? Mark, submit. Yay, it all passed. Yay. So that's awesome. So next one we're going to do is we're going to assign strings to variables. So I'm going to delete that so you guys can't cheat. Actually, I'm going to copy that and delete. Okay, so greeting, hello, print greeting, greeting equals bonjour, print greeting. What? Okay, so if I, if I run that, old value of greeting, it becomes new value. So it's saying greeting is hello, and then I'm just changing it to bonjour. So um, hint here is that variables are like files on your computer. They have a name, and you can store data in them. Um, a Word document, you can put whatever like whatever text in a Word document, and when you open it, you can change it. So variables are a little bit like files. Well, if you're using Unix, no. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's ask the user a question. So computer programs, how do I get input from the user? This is a really important one. So here we're going to say name, input what is your name. Now. We're going to be doing a few of these. Notice the space at the end there, question mark, and notice the capital at the beginning. So run this. What is your name? Brock. And I hit enter. Um, I'm going to run it again. What is your name? Frank. Wow, that's pretty cool. So we can now get information from the user. Ooh, functions. What? So this is this is the next bit of thing that we're going to learn about. It's called functions. So we've already used two. We've used print. And we've used input in our purple. So these are built-in functions. Um, built-in functions to Python. We can write our own, um, which we won't learn about just yet, but um, you can write your own functions just like you can create your own variables. Um, just like a variable is a name bit of data, a function is a name piece of code. 
So somewhere in the Python um, libraries, there's a bit of code that takes whatever you put in the brackets and displays it to us green. So a function is called by its name followed by the round brackets. We learned that they're called parentheses earlier. Um, so functions take data, so print takes a string, and then we put that inside the bracket. The string is the value you want to um, do. So to be or not to be, that is the question. And we'll run that. <laughs> Yay. So some functions produce data while um, form task input produces a string that the user's entered, and it's actually returned back outside the function to the variable here. So message equals input repeat. So let's scroll down a little bit, repeat, hello there, enter, hello there, hello there, nicely done. Okay, so that's cool. So variables, variable variables, what? Um, so variables called variables because they can vary. They can take um, any value, you can put stuff into them. Um, you can go, what is your favorite animal? Um, it is a water bear. I like water bears too, oh, isn't that nice? The computer likes water bears too. Uh, okay, so what is your favorite animal? Pine balls. Yeah, so not really, um, yeah, not really making sense there. Um, here the animal variable contains tigers. I'll put pineapples in. This is like animal equals pineapples. What are you, are you crazy or something? Anyway, um, we're going to learn about naming variables properly shortly. So, um, oh, we're up to this one. Meet the puppy. Your friend has a new puppy. Write a program to tell the puppy to sit using its name. So we need. What do we need to do here? We need to input a puppy name into a variable, and then we need to output a string that says sit, followed by the puppy name. Okay, make sure you get the input the same as the prompt message, especially the space after the question mark, and I already gave you that pro tip before. So, puppy, and I'm gonna say name, puppy underscore name, so that's a good name for a variable that's gonna store the puppy name, equals, and we've done this before, input, what is the name of the puppy, question mark. What did it say? Space, and then close. And then, print, sit space plus okay I reckon that's pretty cool so I'm gonna run that voice puppy name shadow sit shadow mark that submit it's gonna say it's the same is it what's well, yep no pass yay okay so reusable variables oh, I'm gonna go and get rid of that um, when you store some data you can use it as many times as you like so let's have a look at this oh, yeah, wrong one um, what do you like? Food. Hey, what do you like? Killer robots of death and destruction. Oh, no. Death. That's going to be too long. That'll be. Yay. Um, what do I like? Cupcakes. Yay. All right, so um, topic equals what do you like? We've done that before. Print topic. It's a cool print. I love topic. So we're using it over and over again. Um, and it will always, until we change it, store whatever we input there. So choosing good variable names. This is what I was talking about before. Blue equals input, what is the color of the sky? This, what is the color of the sky? Blue. Yeah, if we run it again, um, and what if we said pink, because it's sunset, the sky color is pink, but think about it, print the sky color is blue. What if that's pink? Oh, that's just gonna confuse me. So you can use sky color because it can change. Pick a variable that means something. Don't abbreviate, doesn't matter how long or short your variables are, don't abbreviate and go, oh, what do I abbreviate it to? I don't know what that means. So now, this is much better. We can say it is green because we're on a different planet. So nice. So, boaty mick boat face. Okay, so um, oh, there, there was a vote, um, the yeah, National Environment Research Council's boat, that they voted on what it should be called, and the favorite was boaty mick boat face. Uh, they didn't end up naming it boaty mick boat face, which, um, evidently online polls are not binding or are not legal contracts so lucky for them they didn't um, get voting with Boatface on, as a name vote. Um, it was end up being called the David Attenborough or something. Oh yeah, there it is down the bottom. The RS, RRS Sir David Attenborough. So um, we're, going to, we're going to name different things. We're going to input a variable. So what word? Boat. We're going to boaty make boat face. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to grab a variable, word equals, so a prompt, input, and this is a nice simple one, word, remember, question mark, space, close that, and then we're going to print, let's think about this, we're going to print our word first, and then we don't want a space, so, and then we do want a space, and then we want mc, 
And then we don't want a space there, we want our word again, plus we want base, close bracket. I think that should do. So let's have a look. Word is boat, boat and boat face. Let's run it again. Um, cat, catty, Mick, cat face. So let's mark that. So I could check it a couple of times and generally check it with whatever they put there. And see here it goes testing, testing punctuation, testing words, first example, um, second example, third example, and then they have a one that they don't tell you about. Isn't that tricky? So well done. We have just done the last one. So this is our we've completed section one and this is starting to sound like a programmer. We should be able to explain this code. So we are assigning some user input as a string into a variable called message and msg I'm assuming is called message and then we are printing message we, and then we're adding or concatenating some dots and then we're adding it again and some more dots and then we're going to put that on the screen with the print function so let's have a look echo 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 i reckon this should be a echo 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 plus plus yeah that's going to be better so you stand at the top of the thing and you go echo 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 yay so we're done for it and i'm going to continue this in a little bit for the second section